chef with more than a dozen restaurants to his name. He's also a best-selling author, TV personality, and the founder of World Central Kitchen. His newest book is a graphic novel about World Central Kitchen called Feeding Dangerously. Let's welcome everybody, Chef Jose Andres. your childhood. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> I heard, wait, I love your energy, by the way, and I am not kidding. I'm bald, like, getting ready for this interview, because you are an amazing human. You're an incredible human. You are. Like, it's like, it's really amazing, like, what you do. I knew about the restaurants, I knew all that stuff. I didn't know all about the humanitarian stuff. You're an incredible man. Well, uh, uh, as my wife, she may have a different opinion. <laughs> Uh, we've been almost 30 years married, and she oh. says that technically she's been married to me 60 years. I don't know. <laughs> it feels more. It feels like more. Yeah, as my daughters, I don't think they will have the same opinion of you. <laughs> That's okay. Family's supposed to keep it real. Like, Daddy, don't speak English. Nobody <laughs> can understand you. We will translate for you, this type of daughters. <laughs> So yeah, I guess I'm a good human being. This type of daughters, I like. Wait. <laughs> so wait, speaking of your daughters, you have a, a thing in your your household like cooking paella is like a very dangerous thing. What and why? What? Yeah. What happened? I think this is fake news, people. This is something is going around. No, I hear it's about fire. Okay. Okay. All right. I am a dad. Check. That uh, that I'm a cook that I believe my daughters to be out of danger's way, I will have them better prepared for life if I teach them from early on about the dangers of the world, not putting them behind walls. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I let my daughters use knives with barely they were two years old and cook with open fire. And sometimes the fires I make at home, they can be very big cooking the paella. And my... <laughs> And the fire is bigger than my daughter's. <laughs> and the fire is a really big fire. <laughs> and when you have little daughters, a um, big fire, and uh, you're teaching your daughters how to make the paella, the fire sometimes is nice. The, the fire wants to help you, wants to kiss you. <laughs> because fire is a good person if you treat it with respect. And I think the fire wanted you to give kind of a little kiss to my daughter's eyebrows. <laughs> and, and was a little, you know, smelly, little bit. My daughters were overdoing it. Daddy, you burned me. I didn't burn you. It was the fire. It was the fire. <laughs> I said, don't tell anything to mommy, please. No. <laughs> Just let's keep it. I mean, yeah. Oh, oh, when I forgot one of my daughters, yeah, in the supermarket. But I came back. <laughs> I hey! But I came back! Hey! I, I, I didn't have salt, and it was very important. I was baking a fish in salt, and my daughter, yeah, you got the salt, but what about me? So, yeah, but between the fire and that, I, I don't Father think I did Father of the year, yeah. Yeah, fire, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh, that looked cool too, the thing you were cooking it in. That was really cool. We showed the video of that big black thing. That was cool. A paella pan. That is, no. <laughs> But what's the thing underneath of it? Was it connected? Yeah, it's like, it's, I don't Look, know I'm gonna be real with you. I make like nothing. So yeah. like, I'm not a cook, so I've never seen, oh. yeah, yeah, no. You're not a cook? No, and I am, it's you not fair. You don't, you don't sing when you cook? No, yeah, that's, I got the you... one talent, man. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. I, I don't think she has one talent. One. I think she has many, many I, talents. I can't even make eggs. I can't All make right. eggs. People of America, the <laughs> Kelly and Jose cooking show. Yeah. She teaches me. I make paella. She teaches me to sing, and I teach her to cook. Yeah. Bingo. As long as no one's, okay, I'll do that. As long as no one's eating my food. No, wait, but speaking of food, like my, okay, this is a good segue. My dogs will not even eat my food. So you have, <laughs> you have made a pet food, which would, they would love. So it's called Real Mesa. Man, your pronunciation Real is mesa. unbelievable. Unbelievable. Real mesa. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I have this 
I got this line that uh, you usually put out of amazing dog food. Uh, m when I was young, uh, my father, my mother, we had a home, a German shepherd. Mm. My father will cook for us and we'll cook for the dog. I think he put more love in cooking for the dog he did for us. Yeah. And I was with more friends, they have a lot of uh, experience in the pet business, and they said, Jose, why would not do use uh, pet food that celebrates your yeah. Latino and Spanish heritage? And I thought it was a great idea because when you're eating with friends, good ideas always come. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that even in the worst moments of humanity, um, people sometimes will put themselves in dangers. I've seen it in Ukraine. I've seen it in so many other parts that a pet, in a way, is as part of the family. And will be people not living in their homes, even if sometimes it's not as smart because they can't be in danger. But for them, if they cannot take the dogs with them, they will stay next to them. Mm -hmm. So this is this 360 degree story of, yes, everybody's family, even our pets are family. So it's great that uh, Real Mesa, a percentage of the profits uh, that hopefully be successful and will have profits yeah. are always gonna go in this case to support my NGO, Wall Central Kitchen, that this is a way that if you take care of every family, you know the families are also taking care of their pets. Yeah. I want to talk about World Central Kitchen. This is yeah. what had me just bawling, learning all this about you. This is, at the most devastating moments in people's lives, you come in and you feed these people. Don't even, nobody even really thinks about that. I don't think that's not the first thing at the forefront of their mind. So what got you into this? Well, what got me into this is to understand that Sometimes in emergencies, food and water was an afterthought. And that uh, cooks like me, what, that we feed the few, we had the same power to feed the many. Mm -hmm. And especially if we all come together. It's restaurants everywhere. Every arena has food stands, it's food trucks, it's catering companies. And I thought, oh my God, I watched Katrina, how we had Tens of thousands of Americans, almost forgotten, in the Superdome, where actually it was very easy to take care of them. For days, they didn't receive food and water. So I thought, what if? So I didn't do anything, Katrina. I stayed in the comfort of my home. When Haiti happened in 2010, I took a plane, the big earthquake that killed hundreds of thousands mm -hmm. of Haitians in Port-au-Prince. I went and I began doing what I know, learning. And I began feeding people without realizing we've been now in every single hurricane earthquake, volcano, and lately also in conflicts. In Ukraine alone, in the last two years, we've done more than 240 million meals inside Ukraine. Wow. Uh, unfortunately, right now, we're in Armenia, we're in Lebanon. Uh, we are in Israel uh, doing more than 240,000 hot meals already. We are also inside Gaza, 240,000 meals, also hot, and a million meals so people can cook themselves because we already had food inside Gaza. At the end, what we are trying to send a message is that food and water is a universal human right. We believe in longer tables and bringing people together. The, the beauty of it is obviously we need food and water, but the beauty of it too is that they're, you're not forgotten. Like people are not forgetting you. Like to have the impact of that of them walking up and everything is just, their life has been devastated and somebody cooking a warm meal for them, that's, that transforms it, hearts. It's such an important message because people don't want our pity, they want our respect. Hmm. What Wall Central Kitchen does is comes, but we allow every single local that wants to help and volunteer to join us. It's not like we make them better. They make us better because who is better than the locals that know their communities? That's why in the case of Ukraine, we went from two people of World Central Kitchen to a team of more than 550 restaurants and 5,000 team members distributing food all across Ukraine. You see? The domino effect. We build mm -hmm. teams. Everybody wants to help. In the worst moments of humanity, the best of humanity shows up. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Well, I want to talk about this because you have a new graphic novel. It's Feeding Dangerously. So I didn't, I didn't know this about you, but you're like really into like comics, graphic novels, all that, right? Manga, I, I love. You look 10 years old right now. Like you're. <laughs> you know, I love it. I love it. So this is important to you. So you know the amazing 
social media that you receive now, messages, and you can talk to everybody, is Steve Orlando. I mean, Steve Orlando is like the, the LeBron James, Jordan, Messi of, of comic books. Uh, I, and he texts me like, hey, dude, uh, I, I want to tell the story of Wall Central Kitchen. I'm like, OK, cool. <laughs> and here we are four or five years later, which tells the story of the beginnings of Wall Central Kitchen. But there you're going to see stories of the many men and women that did the incredible uh, happen under very difficult circumstances. So you're gonna see me cooking paella with my dad because he was a very important early influence. You're gonna see us then cooking paella in the middle of Puerto Rico when we fed four million people after Maria uh, category five hurricane destroyed the entire island. You're gonna see many of the key moments that made Wall Central Kitchen what it is today. We're still learning, we're still a very young organization, but with this book, with this comic, uh, I want to tell the story of what we're doing so more people can join us, more people can yeah. be empowered to do what we do, and then one day we can say, we'll never have hunger again ever in the world. Mm -hmm. If we come together, we can solve the big problems that humanity is facing. Absolutely. This is a fun way to tell that story. Yeah, a very cool way to do it. I'm gonna hold it up, because I love it. It's so, people are so talented. Like, it's incredible to me. But everybody, for more details on World Central Kitchen, check out our Instagram story. All right, we are back, and I'm hanging out with Chef Jose Andres. And our next guests are super stoked to meet him. In fact, he is the actual inspiration behind their efforts to keep people in their community fed. They've rallied fellow high schoolers to come together to start a program similar to World Central Kitchen on a local level. From Kitchens for Change, everybody say hello to Elias and Audrey. <laughs> so meet Chef Jose. <laughs> so okay, I'm gonna ask y'all, like explain Kitchens for Change. Where did this come from and the inspiration? At its core, Kitchens for Change is really about uh, high schoolers coming together and trying to combat the issue of food insecurity in our local community. And really, we found our, the, it's the legs for this organization. Um, it was me and my mother. We were sitting there and we saw, you know, post-pandemic, how rampant the issue of food insecurity was in our local community. And we had seen uh, Jose Andreas and the amazing work he did with World Central Kitchen. And we thought to ourselves, you know, we can do a spin-off of this in our local community and really make a great impact. Yeah, and both Elias and I's families are in the restaurant business. Oh. So we got to thinking, how can we use the resources we have with our restaurants to get students involved in tackling food insecurities within our community? And to our surprise, we had over 100 students willing to jump on board with our mission. Yeah. So we used our restaurants, kitchens after hours to get students in there, mentored by local chefs, and we started cooking for areas in our community that were facing food insecurity. And to this day, we're not just a club on campus, but we're an actual nonprofit organization with multiple chapters. That's so incredible. So what have you learned? Like, cause I love one thing you said, you said your organization, like we still have more to learn. And I think any organization that knows that is the organization to get behind because to stop learning, is death, I think, of anything, you know, of a human, of an organization or whatnot. So what, what do you think that you've learned through World Central Kitchen? What I learned is that very often uh, we are taught that we always need to follow a plan. What did we learn during the pandemic? That very often things never go as planned. Mm. What happens if you embrace the complexity of the moment and you train your family, your, your businesses, the people around you to adapt. <laughs> Adaptation wins the day over planning. What these two amazing individuals, they've done, they adapted to the situation, they saw what they had around them, and they did the most they could with what was at their disposal, mm -hmm. to use their family businesses, restaurants, uh, after hours, used to feed the local community need, is used a magical, simple, powerful idea. It's people like them that, yes, we can change America, we can improve America, we can change the absolutely, world. Absolutely, absolutely, I agree. <laughs> well, Elias' mama, Mohini, is in the audience, and she's a culinary teacher at his high school and helps advise Kitchens for Change. So Mohini, oh my gosh, I mean, you've gotta be so proud. Yes, I am. <laughs> um, I am so proud of Audrey and Elias. Um, ever since Elias was born, I 
as a gut level, as a mom, I knew he was destined for something great. And I think they both are. And whatever they do in their life, I just want them to always remember this time in their life and that passion and what food means for people. Mm -hmm. And that's where you hit the core. And Chef Jose Andreas, you are an epitome of success for students, for chefs, for people like us. You've taken something and you've given back to this world um, and it's everything that's good about this world. Thank you. You're the best. Ah. And she gave me amazing Indian spices. Oh, she did? I cannot wait to get to my kitchen and it's start cooking with those. Um, well, our friends, uh, this is for Elias and Audrey, our friends at ConAgra believe everybody deserves consistent access to nutritious food and they love the work that you're doing at Kitchens for Change. So they are donating $10,000 to help out. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes, it's incredible. Thank you, so Absolutely. Thank you so much. Absolutely, thank you all so much for joining us. We're gonna be right back, everybody.